we all know who she is. If we see her picture, we can name her immediately. She's been considered for sainthood. We have read many books about her and even read books that she herself have written. She has been a guest in our diocese at one of, a co one of the colleges. Who am I talking about? Mother Teresa, a woman dedicated to prayer, to faith, to the love of God, because she, with her community that she founded, have a vocation to care for the poor, the suffering, and the dying, always responding to the needy, sharing her gifts of love throughout the world. And so whenever I picture Mother Teresa, I see her with the poor, the vulnerable, those who are indeed the outcast, giving, saving their lives, giving them dignity as she nurses and cares and loves them all. A true gift of life. And so today, miracles and healing, rising to life, jump off the scriptures today because we believe all of that about Jesus Christ about his continued presence with the community of the church. And so the scriptures to date state one thing very clearly, that God our Father and Jesus his Son are all about life, about healing, about you and me, about us sharing the blessings that God has given to us, particularly that gift of faith, that trust, and the life that we live every day. Today's parable is in the middle point of St. Mark's series of miracles that we will hear proclaimed. It gives us not just another look at the signs that Jesus worked, but rather a hint to what lies in the future. Typically, these parables, as we know, they end with a secret the instruction from Jesus not to tell anyone about it. And this event, as we know, would only then be fully understood by Jesus' disciples after the resurrection of Christ from the dead. And so the Gospels were preached then by Christ. They're shared, proclaimed, and lived today. And they just don't recall the past but they're used to make you and me aware that the Spirit of God is alive within us. That just as Jesus was led, so too are you and I. We're led to know, as true believers, what is possible if we have faith and trust in our God. Yes, Jesus' Spirit lives in all of us, and we as a people are called here, united in faith, to continue what Christ has done. Some people might maybe question that. Some might say, well, is that really possible? Is it true? But I say, yes, it is. Just think about Mother Teresa for a moment. The poor, the needy, the vulnerable, the dying, the sick. All of them have grown. All of them have improved because of the life-giving care that Mother Teresa and her community extended to others. The dignity that they gave to allow them to live a little longer so that they might have life and faith and experience the love of our God. And your way and my way of doing that is no less real. Take, for example, a teacher who sparks the gift of learning in the minds of their students. Or think about parents whose love guides and gives their children a sense of security, a sense of belonging. Or what about the spouse whose fidelity offers continued love, support, and strength to one another? Or what about the medical personnel whose skills alleviate pain and suffering? Or maybe the teenager who helps a friend 
refuse the temptations of alcohol and drug addiction due to peer pressure? Or what about neighborhood groups who reach out to the needy, the suffering, who keep an eye on one another? Or what about Red Cross donors who give their blood for the gift of life? Don't forget after Mass, the Red Cross, we're having a blood drive here at St. Gregory's in the gathering room if you can share the gift of your blood with someone in need. And the list can go on and on and on. Our God does not rejoice in the destruction of living things. No, our God gives life, strength, and healing. And so you and I, we rise to life when we refuse to let prejudice and discrimination hinder another's development. When we work together for just legislation, for human dignity, and the right to life for all. For the gift of religious freedom, when we question destruction inherent in nuclear arms, and then indeed as we give life to one another. Today's gospel, Jesus calls our attention to those two wonderful experiences of trust, of faith in him. We hear of one group of people who were treated unfairly in the day. The woman who approached Jesus, she was marked as unclean because of her illness. By Jewish law, anyone touching her with that illness would then be considered unclean themselves as well. But the woman's faith led her to Christ, and he put aside the religious laws to restore to health, to full function in her life. As the scriptures tell us, Because of who she was, she felt she could not face him in her unclean condition. She risked. She follows him, and she touches his cloak, and she is healed. And Jesus tells her, very simply, that it is her faith that has healed her. What faith, what trust. And then we experience also in the gospel the needs and the pains of Jairus, the synagogue official. His daughter, a child of 12, has become critically ill, as we know. Quickly, word reaches him. His world begins to crumble around him. He's filled with fear. Whom should he turn to? He doesn't know what to do. But he turns to God in prayer. And then he's answered. Because he hears about Jesus the Christ. He who is going about healing and preaching. And so Jairus goes, looks, seeks him out. He finds him and he invites him to his house to cure his daughter, and Jesus agrees. On the way, we know they're told the sad news that the daughter has died. But Jesus simply says, do not be afraid. Just have faith. And Jairus placed all his faith, all his trust in the words of Jesus Christ. And that faith, that trust, led to the healing of his daughter. As you and I, we go through life and sometimes we have those bumpy roads where our world seems to be crumbling around us because of stress and anxiety, frustration, But the question we have to ask is, how do we respond to that? Do we become angry, resentful? Do we get depressed, despairing? Or do we use the moment to let it move us to teach us to respond in a positive, life-giving way? Does it lead us to our loving God who only wants the best for all of us? God never promised that it would be easy or that there would be no pain, no stumbling blocks, no suffering. But what he does promise is that he will be right there by our side in the pain and in the suffering to guide and inspire all of us. In the movie, The Passion of Christ, Mary goes to Jesus when he was a little child 
he had fallen, and he says, she says to him, I am here. And later when Jesus falls under the weight of the cross, Mary again goes to him and says, I'm here. That's what God does for you and me because God loves us so much. What we need to do is trust in that love. What we need to do is have faith in that love. What we need to do is put it into action every day of our lives. God made us capable to do it. He made us for life. He made us for love. He made us for healing. The world is in all of our hands. We are the ones whose cloaks and clothing must be touched so that we can bring that healing grace of Christ. We must be the ones to grasp the lifeless hand, to share care and compassion with the suffering and the dying, to restore life to our brothers and sisters. It's when we do that, that our faith, our trust, our love is lived, and our God is with us always.